A final salute to Starman, the world's loneliest astronaut. It will be the moon next August 14th that will show us the exact point in the sky to which to send our thoughts. Hey guys, how are you doing with the night sky? Do you know how to recognize stars and constellations? Don't worry, if you really have no idea how to orient yourself in the sky, just take a look at this map, which we will show again at the end of the video. And if some of you are wondering why you should do this, the reason is, in this way you will be able to answer a question that certainly has often crossed your mind of space enthusiasts. That is, where is Starman now? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Not the alien visitor played by Jeff Bridges in the movie of the same name, but the silent astronaut who has been piloting a red Tesla Roadster car around the sun for more than three and a half years. Do you remember? Given the risk of launch failure, it was assumed 50% chance that the rocket exploded on the ramp, as happened in the previous test, to test what at the time was supposed to be the most powerful rocket in the world, the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX needed a dummy load, that is of no importance in the scientific and economic terms. Elon Musk, the patron of both SpaceX and Tesla, therefore chose his personal roadster instead of a simple ballast, putting at the wheel a dummy wearing the prototype of the next generation spacesuit, same one that we have then really seen in the Crew Dragon astronauts heading to the space station. Musk himself had declared that given the high probability of launch failure, he would not have chosen as payload anything too sentimental or irretrievable, adding that usually for demonstration missions like that they usually choose payloads as trivial as concrete blocks, and that he wanted to offer something more frivolous because even the ridiculous things are important. Within the first five hours of launch, three cameras mounted on a stand showed the Tesla Roadster and its passenger Starman with his elbow sent out the window, hurtling through space with Earth in the background. The streaming lasted as long as the Tesla batteries lasted. Then Starman disappeared forever from our visual horizon, piloting alone along a road that some sources said would take him to the main asteroid belt. In fact, from a review of the calculations of the orbital parameters released by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, it seems now established that the Tesla has not had sufficient thrust to reach that destination and that it is traveling along an orbit that Anaphelion takes it just beyond the Martian orbit. The Roadster, in fact, is now in a heliocentric orbit that crosses the orbit of Mars and reaches a distance of 1.66 astronomical units from the Sun, equal to about 250 million kilometers, with a slight inclination with respect to the orbital plane of Mars, so it will never be possible for the Tesla to impact the planet or be captured by its gravitational field. And anyway, even if the rocket had by chance taken a transfer orbit to Mars, the car could have not been put into orbit around Mars because the second stage of the rocket that carries it is not equipped with propellant, nor the necessary maneuvering and communication capabilities. The flight organized by SpaceX was simply intended to demonstrate that Falcon Heavy is capable of launching significant payloads to Mars on potential future missions. It has also been calculated that over a very long period of 3 million years, the probability of Tesla colliding with Earth is no more than 6%. But the question at this point is, will Starman's quiet cosmic navigation last that long? Elon Musk stated that car and pilot could stay in space for billions of years, and that in this sense they could become one of the longest lived records of human existence. The problem is that even in the vacuum of space, Alas, we age, and not necessarily well. According to some material experts, in fact, Starman won't last very long. Outside the Earth's atmosphere, the sentient pilot and his car are in fact constantly bombarded by cosmic rays and solar wind. Most of the materials in the Tesla and Starman spacesuit, and presumably the dummy itself, are organic polymers, plastics, and rubber, to be precise whose chemical bonds are not made to withstand a continuous bombardment of high-energy particles. Hang on a sec before we continue. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell, you will help us to make products of even higher quality. You know when a rubber band or a plastic item left in the sun for months or years becomes brittle, discolored, and cracks? About the same thing, but more violent. 
according to chemist William Carroll of the Indiana University, in a year Tesla's organic materials will be shattered. Carbon fiber will last a long time, but it too will slowly succumb to the radiation bombardment of the interplanetary environment. Much of the roaster and starman will end up in shreds and dust, probably dispersed by centrifugal force. The roaster rotates on itself in just under five minutes, and its gravity is irrelevant. In a few years, say the pessimists, the Tesla will be a faded skeleton of metal and shreds of plastic with a yellowed windshield. In addition, Starman and his car are traveling in an orbit whose distance from the sun varies with a period of 557 days to 100 to 250 million kilometers, which means that aircraft and pilot will go through cycles of heating and cooling that will tend to degrade all materials of the Tesla, even those inorganic as glass and metals. All of this will happen fairly quickly, say a decade or so. But for Tesla and its passenger, the trouble is just beginning. At longer times, say from now to the end of the century, they will have to fight with the flow of micrometeoroids that continuously cross the interplanetary space. If we assume for convenience the data for near-Earth space, every square meter of Tesla will be hit on average every century by a grain at least one millimeter wide. That sounds like nothing, but when a grain of sand passes through you at 10 or 20 kilometers per second, it can leave a hole nearly half a centimeter wide. In a couple of centuries, the wreckage of the Tesla and Starman will look like they came out of a gunfight. In a few thousand years, both will have collected the first impacts with bodies close to the centimeter in size, capable of leaving craters the size of a fist. In a million years, probably one or more meteorites as large as a small pebble will hit what remains of Tesla, devastating it. In short, in about one million years, a specter will roam the solar system. The Tesla reduced to a pile of metal pierced and broken, with the windshield now completely opaque and full of cracks and holes. In one or two places, it is clear that the collision with something big has dismembered some pieces. Small piles of dust here and there perhaps held back by electrostatic forces, will be what remains of Starman and the car's trim. An extraterrestrial intercepting the Tesla would have a hard time figuring out what it is or was about. At that point, Isaac Newton, with his universal gravitation, will be the biggest risk for Tesla. A million years after the launch, Musk's car will have completed more than 500,000 orbits around the sun. But how long can the carousel last? The planets of the solar system, especially Earth and Jupiter, with their gravitational fields, will slowly change the orbit of the roadster, shortening or lengthening its period of revolution. In the same way, also more subtle phenomena will act as the Yarkovsky effect, that is, the alteration of the orbits of small celestial bodies due to the pressure of thermal radiation. In general, the possible scenarios are three. The roadster could get closer and closer to the sun until it literally falls into it, or it could be hurled away from the solar system and end up in interstellar space. Or finally, less likely but entirely possible, it could hit a planet such as Mars or Earth. Predicting exactly what and when it will happen is notoriously difficult, as gravitational systems with more than three bodies are chaotic systems, where a tiny error on the initial data leads to completely different predictions. If the remains of the roadster will not crash or will not be ejected into interstellar space, then the Sun will decide its fate, even if only in billions of years. In fact, our star will become brighter and brighter until 5 billion years from now, it will rapidly evolve into a red giant, monstrously increasing its diameter to encompass the Earth and in all probability also Tesla. The metallic remnants will first melt, becoming an orbiting droplet of liquid metal and then disintegrate in the solar atmosphere. At this point, Starman's journey is over. By diving into a star, he will do justice to his name. If, on the other hand, the roadster finds itself exiled into interstellar space, its remains could survive for a long time. It would become an interstellar asteroid like Oumuamua. It might reach another solar system and perhaps be intercepted by some intelligent species, but unfortunately, it is very unlikely to happen. Almost certainly, its next encounter with the star system will happen in an inconceivable number of years, and by that time, all stars will have become black holes or morbid white dwarfs. 
The Tesla wreckage will then wander forever in the darkness within the galaxy, slowly consumed by the incessant erosion of cosmic dust. If they manage to avoid being swallowed by a black hole, the last remnants of the Tesla will also end up in dust, in a universe far colder and darker than the one we know. But the Roadster's main appeal has never been its physical state. The iconic image of Starman flying through space with Earth as a backdrop inspired audience members and sparked excitement about the new space race. To imagine where Starman might fly is to imagine where humanity might go. And that's why, although very far away and practically unobservable, we think it's important that each of us can at least know its approximate position in the sky, so that we can accompany it with our thoughts in its melancholic and suggestive journey in the solar system. But in cases like these, how do we do it? We know the celestial coordinates of Starman, hour by hour, right ascension and declination. But for those who do not have a deep astronomical knowledge, these coordinates are very obscure and impractical. The only way to be sure to look in the right direction is then to relate the position of Starman with that of another celestial object. But that is clearly visible and recognizable by anyone. And what is there in the night sky more easily recognizable than the moon? Nothing. And it is precisely for this reason that we invite all of you on the evening of August 14th at 10 p.m. local time in New York City to be found with your eyes turned towards the southwest horizon. At an altitude of about 13 degrees above the horizon, a beautiful first quarter moon will be visible. Well, less than 5 degrees east of the moon and at the same altitude, that will be the point where you will have to look to perceive the invisible presence of Starman. The Tesla at that time will be 178 million kilometers away from the Earth, moving away at a speed of 23 kilometers per second. This is valid for the inhabitants of the region around New York, but with slight differences in time and position. It will also be valid for many other places on Earth. In Rome, at the same time of 10 p.m., the angular distance of Starman from the Moon will be 7.5 degrees, in Moscow, 8.5 degrees, etc. To orient yourself even better, go back to look at the celestial map that we proposed at the beginning and compare all the various references. As you can see, in addition to the Moon, Starman will enjoy the company of extraordinary summer constellations, such as Scorpio as it moves away from your sight diving deeper and deeper into the constellation Libra. Goodbye, Starman. Have a good trip.